Hey, the Potrat here. In this video, I just want to briefly talk about and demonstrate another common method regarding how to use charcoal for your artwork. And you usually see this approach from a bit more experienced artists because it involves using two different types of charcoal. And ideally, both are very soft and flexible in their own category. Compared to each other, however, uh, compressed charcoal is more stable, solid, and can more reliably leave a darker mark, while vine charcoal has much lower density. Any mark it leaves on paper is like charcoal dust. It can easily be smudged around and erased off. And the softer and malleable something is, the more efficient you can work with it. But it also can get messy and requires more experience and control. And I'll be using my brand of pure charcoal pencil and paper. You could get your hand on some. Discount code and link is in the description. So this is like a two layer process. You start with the vine charcoal to create a background of mid-tone for the drawing. And then using the compressed charcoal to add in the dark tones and details. And eraser to bring out the highlights and light tones. So as you can see on screen now, I started out with some uh, vine charcoal and uh, did some structure lines. Some of these lines are necessary for myself and some of these, these lines I did for your benefit. So you can kind of see what shape that I'm uh, going for. And these lines are all going to disappear because how soft the charcoal is. Vine charcoal is like, like I said, it's, it's like dust. The moment you start smudging, uh, all that line is going to disappear. And you can tell right now, I'm kind of mapping out the planes of the face, the shadows and so on. Unless the area are so different in how I treat it with the amount of charcoal, I'm probably going to lose most of the details that I put down. However, you can see that where the eye is, where the nose is and so on, and especially where the hair is, uh, those are not going to be lost. And here I'm starting drawing the outline of the hand, uh, very rough. I just want to make sure that it generally has, a, you know, the overall proportion that looks okay. And at this point, I'm not even sure compositionally how am I going to treat this piece, whether I want the shoulder on the left or the right, because that's also part of the thing to consider. And notice I can just start put really dark tones down in the shadow areas. The neck is very very dark too, and uh, so is the hair. And working with vine charcoal, you know, there is pro and con. The pro is that you can really use it to define the outline, define the shape, and uh, creating a background that is very uniform and smudge friendly. It's very effective in doing that. You can create a, a smooth mid-tone extremely easily. But uh, the negative side is, of course, it is much harder to control, right? Uh, you can accidentally smudge the drawing so easily. So as you can see now, I'm just smudging with my fingers. I don't even need anything else. You see how the charcoal all become kind of like one tone, and they become much more closer to each other in terms of tone value. However, I can still look, see where the nose is and kind of where the eyes are and the hand. And now, since I have the underlining shape down, the shadow is shaped down, uh, I can go in with my compressed pencil and I can start drawing with more pressure and the markings are much more stable, they're going to be staying on the paper much more reliably. And I believe this drawing, the eye, both eyes are closed, which makes the drawing a lot easier to do actually. Even though it, look, it kind of looks like it's open right now, but the markings are there to serve in the purpose of telling me where the eyes are. I can draw them open or closed. There's a little bit of uh, charcoal on the left side to always to contrast with the uh, the lighting. And as I'm walking through the drawing, I can I'm constantly switching between the charcoal pencil and eraser to balance the uh, to bring out the, the highlights or to join the, the shades and dark tones as needed and as I'm drawing you can see how even though right now there's very little detail on the screen it's just that eye doesn't even have any detail but we can already kind of see where this whole thing is going and this is where you want to be like I always say you want to be at this place where you can just with no training you can just feel whether this joint is kind of going in the right direction or not and you want to get to this position uh, this place as fast as you can that's actually an extremely reliable way for you to draw accurately because we're all like I said many times we're all very very good at analyzing ratios 
despite what we think. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference between two actresses that looks kind of similar to each other. We're all hypersensitive to the ratios on the face. It's just that it's it's hard for some of us. It's, well, it's hard for most people without conscious practice to bring that out in drawing and, and to do that consciously, right? So that's so. Just keep that in mind. You are all great artists, and you are all great at portraits. It's just a matter of bringing that ability out so that you can do it consciously instead of subconsciously. And now you can see how the outer eye comes comes out. And if you remember from earlier, those are falls on the same line, the curved line of the form of the face. And of course, I have my uh, self-made trusty uh, smudge tool to uh, constantly adjust and tweak and smudge and refine the tiny well the details as well as the surface level um the texture of the surface that i want to wind jaw female generally speaking you want the texture to be fairly smooth especially when with regard to young females or children so it's not that the texture is bad but if you do have texture make sure it's consistent over over the entire joint or you can just make it really really smooth those are two methods so from this point i'm not doing anything too different from what i always do it's just nice to have a background that's already established the last few joints i did that with my single charcoal compressed charcoal pencil this one i'm just showing you guys you can do this also very easily with vine charcoal and vine charcoal is really really great for smooth tones it's just when you smudge it you cannot help it but make it very very smooth that's just it's naturally becomes very very smooth and uh, it's great for skin tones that represents you know smoothness use and and all that see the hardest part is already done and i believe at this part of the drawing i, I was about 35 minutes into the drawing i did spend a decent amount of time you you always need to spend a decent amount of time to refine but you can see how it went from just a patch of gray tone with a little patches of shades to something like this within half an hour really and it's not like i'm super fast this method and once you re reach this kind of experience you naturally will draw things at this speed you can slow it down even if you wanted to and all i'm doing now is tweaking the tiny details on the surface of the face it is very very important especially with the subtle tone values on the face what makes drawing a portrait relatively more difficult is that it has such a low error tolerance for both proportion and tone value so as an example if there's an area on the cheek that is slightly darker than the rest you have to accurately present that because it conveys all that information regarding the form to the viewer and like i said before the main difference between the compressed charcoal to the vine charcoal is that compressed charcoal is much more reliable it's not going to be it's not going to disappear if you accidentally smudge on it while with vine charcoal no matter how dark you put the vine charcoal down if you accidentally smudge it it's just going to become five shades lighter it's going to become like a light mid-tone but with compressed charcoal you don't have that problem so they're great working together one for the foundation and one for one to really carve the uh, tones down and uh, and have them settle in the paper there is nothing too new um, for the rest of the join compared to what i have done before and uh, for the purpose of this demonstration it came out okay um, I didn't want to put too much uh, focus on the hands nor the uh, the neck and so on but I still do want to sh describe the form of the hand and the neck and besides the face the hand is actually very difficult to draw it appears easier than what it actually is but th those lines like I think I made some mistakes here and there in this joint, the treatment of the hand, especially in regards to detail, is much different than that of the face. They are much more just representational, a few lines and a little bit of simple shading. Overall, I hope this video introduced you guys to this new way of drawing or at least make you more aware of it so that you can try it yourself. And next time, I probably would do something a bit simpler so that you can follow along. I'm just waiting for a few more subscribers who like my uh, art supplies to get them first and then I'll do like a follow along. Overall, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any comments, questions, um, just uh, let me know in the comment. Well, if you have any comments and questions, let me know in the comments. And if you do get uh, any of my art supplies, I would highly appreciate it if you like it and uh, just leave it a, a rating or something. And I'll talk to you guys next time. 
Cheers.